My name is Emmer Nile, and a year ago I was living in Ethiopia, in Africa, and my wife was a, had a fellowship at a university there, and I have this mapping problem with OSM, and so that was what occupied my time. And so I'll be referencing Ethiopia, and then I also, uh, since I've been back in the States here, I've been a GIS Corps volunteer supporting the Tanzania Development Trust. Janet Chapman, many of you know, uh, is a, a driving force to get Tanzania mapped in order to uh, reduce and, in fact, eliminate FGM, female genital mutilation. So a great project, and so uh, there's a couple parts uh, to that. Uh, Plus Codes is a great system, and, I, and if, we, if you're familiar with Plus Codes, then this will be a bit of review, and maybe you can correct my um, misunderstandings that I, I may portray. The idea is that it's a global addressing system starting with and using base 20 instead of our base 10 numerals, which is latitude and longitude. Uh, a, a group in Zurich, actually employed by Google, came up with this really uh, simple but effective system for indexing the whole planet. So you divide, you, you turn the globe into 20 by 20 grid, and these are the size of the grids. We'll be zooming in on 6G there. And you add, every time you divide by 20, then you add two digits. I'll be zooming in to uh, 6G VW. One of the things about the plus codes is you, there are no words that are spelled with the combinations of letters and numbers. So there's no ones, there's no zeros, there's no vowels. And so you have something that, that kind of looks like a, a British postcode. Uh, we'll be continuing to zoom in one more time, divide by 20. And this is in the, the city of Hawassa, Ethiopia, and uh, the, the center of town. And then you divide by 20 one more time, and you end up with these 10-digit uh, plus codes. So you can see the buildings there. And the, the great thing about plus codes is they, they already exist for every place on the earth. And they're, um, they're, they're relatively easy to understand. Uh, and if you want to talk more about other systems that uh, exist out there, I'd be glad to do that. This is not the, uh, the time to do that. Uh, just for reference, the OpenStreetMap view uh, with Ethiopia and Tanzania superimposed. We, uh, through the Tanzania Development Trust, received 17 million building footprints uh, created by Digital Globe, uh, extracted from their imagery. Uh, on the left would be the OSM buildings. Uh, from, this was in April, and then comparison to the 17 million buildings. And another view of that, the left being the OSM buildings at the time, uh, the center being the digital globe, and then the right shows the subtraction, the differences. So the, the colors highlight the places where OSM does not have the buildings. Uh, so Arusha is that bright a uh, red uh, corner in the north, uh, kind of the east side. Uh, also to note, the green areas are reserves, and so there really shouldn't be any buildings in there. The challenge with the digital globe data is the irregularity of the, the vintage of the imagery. And you can see that in, in some places it's 10 years old, other places it, it's current. And I continually get questions on the crowd to map Slack channel about which imagery should I use, which is the best? And the answer is always, well, it depends. It depends on where you are, because sometimes you'll have the dark green areas that are, you know, could be just a, a few days old, and then there's times when it's uh, not nearly as, uh, as current. I'll run through some, uh, a village in southern Tanzania, Matwara area, uh, where OSM on the right just contains the residential areas and then the two uh, soccer pitches and the Esri imagery on the, the left. Then we add the buildings on. And so you can see that, um, not surprisingly, it's probably a, a DG image that Esri uh, supplied. And then um, I, I calculated the density. So I, I calculated the number of square meters per hectare and kind of tweaked the uh, numbers. And so at around 240 square meters per hectare, you end up with this colored uh, raster, each of those cells being a 
100 meters by 100 meters or a hectare. And so it does a, a great approximation of what's already been identified as the residential areas. So here's a little bit different angle on how we could leverage the, um, the use of the, um, you know, this, this building data from uh, Digital Globe. Quickly run through uh, what the, the buildings look like. Uh, the demo that Digital Globe gave in the promotional stuff did not look like uh, what we ended up with. This is another village. You can see the OSM in the light uh, green or yellow there, and then the Digital Globe in the pink. Uh, then you can see them superposed over them. And then if you were to go ahead and take the plus code and add the addresses, you would see them there. Addresses do exist in Tanzania. You can see uh, the, there's two images there, but the UTC, uh, CDG, and 224 would be the house number that they have applied. This was a Red Cross project in Ushirombo using open map kit and field papers. And then the, the issue is that you've got buildings that have the partial address, the, uh, the complete address, and then no address. In the, in the country of Tanzania, there's about 20,000 buildings that have house address, house number, and that would be out of currently 9 million buildings. So the traditional addressing that we think of for North America or Europe doesn't work in Africa, and that's probably the, um, the biggest challenge that we can uh, take from that. So there you can see in the lower left the, the full address, then those buildings in the upper left have just the house number, and then the ones on the right have no numbers. So that was done with a, um, a group of volunteers, much like us, but the, the house numbers don't exist. So how, how does one go about using addressing or location tools to get uh, emergency services or uh, in any other uh, need to that, that location? So I, I put it out there as a, um, as a challenge or to, to think about, and just because something works for you in your community doesn't mean it's going to work in Africa. That, did you want to, I guess the rest of us should come on up for more questions.